Now, let's take you to business. And the U.S. economy ran hotter than previously estimated over the third quarter. Gross domestic product expanded by an annualized rate of 2.9 percent, far exceeding the 2.6 percent gain reported a month ago. But a closely watched measure of private employment growth revealed the slowest pace of job creation since January. And despite the robust performance over the three months to September, a leading official sees the unemployment rate rising markedly next year. The unemployment rate will climb from its current level of 3.7% to between 45 and 5% by the end of next year. Turning into inflation, I expect cooling global demand and steady supply improvements to result in declining inflation for goods that rely heavily, heavily on commodities, as well as for those that have been heavily affected by supply chain bottlenecks. These factors should contribute importantly to inflation slowing from its current rate to between five and five and a percent, five and a half percent at the end of this year, and to slow further to between three and three and a half percent for next year. John Williams, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York there. Well, let's cross over to Arise Business correspondent Laurie Laird, who is standing by in London. Good to see you, Laurie. So the U.S. economy running even hotter than we thought in the third quarter. What accounted for this upward revision? Yeah, this is a big upward revision, Charles, up to 2.9% of almost 3% growth. Do you remember, though, when the, the way that the U.S. quotes growth is at an, a quarter-on-quarter -quarter pace annualized, so as if that growth had continued on through the year. If we look at it just quarter-on-quarter, -quarter, the way most other countries do, growth was not 0.7%, still very strong, not quite as strong as it would be suggested by that 2.9%. But it does mean that the U.S. grew a lot more quickly than most other big economies over the third quarter. The Eurozone grew by 0.2%. The UK actually contracted. So US looking fairly strong at the moment. One of the most striking things about these data was an upward revision to consumer spending up 1.7% from the previous uh, previous estimate at 1.4%. That does suggest, and we're seeing consumers on the screen in front of us, that does suggest that consumers are still feeling fairly confident despite the huge rise in inflation and despite all sorts of, uh, of news articles talking about the R word recession. Uh, so those are the big, uh, the big factors. One thing to keep an eye on though is part of this very, very strong growth actually came from net trade. And, and, and the big factor there was a really, really sharp fall in imports into the U.S. Now, that could mean that inventories were very high. People, uh, companies were stocking up because of those supply chain issues that we saw earlier in the year. Or it could be that domestic demand is starting to tail off and companies do not feel that they have to import as much. So it's not clear what that fall in imports uh, really signifies. The other downside to be aware of is a massive 27% fall in residential fixed investment. And that's simply a reflection of, of interest rates going higher, mortgage rates going higher. And I suspect we will see even more of that in the fourth quarter with interest rates continuing to climb. And uh, we're also hearing that job growth may be slowing, um, but just moving on from um, the United States, uh, a lot going on in the UK where you are, Laurie. Let's look at this persistent strike action. What's the biggest grievance there? It's pay, Charles. I mean, there are certain sectors of the, of the employment where they're looking at conditions as well. But if there's one word, it's pay. And here we're looking at uh, post carriers from the Royal Mail. They've been striking on and off for a couple of months now and plan to strike throughout the Christmas period, which is, of course, one of their busiest periods. But we're also uh, ambulance drivers have elected to strike. Nurses may strike. And I, I believe, Charles, that this is one of the more underreported stories in the UK, we are seeing strike action all over the place. We aren't hearing the government talk very much about it. And I said the grievance is pay, public sector pay, which is where unions are most active, is rising at an annual rate of 2.2%. Remember, inflation in the UK is over 11%. So, so many of these public sector workers are looking at a 9% pay cut in inflation adjusted terms. So it's, it's certainly easy to see where the grievance comes from. Politicians, particularly Rishi Sunak, the, the prime minister, are not 
talking about how to square this circle. They're not talking about how to handle all of these sectors of the workforce that are unhappy. And certainly there's going to be, have to be some increase in pay. I suspect that the population here isn't so worried about strikes. We're not as dependent on posts coming to our houses as we were. We work from home a lot more. We're not as dependent on transport. But I suspect that rank and file voters will become much more agitated when ambulance workers are on strike, when nurses are on strike, when services that they rely on much more than transport become immobilized. I think there will be a lot of pressure on the government to do something. So a sort of winter of discontent. And whilst we contemplate how this might be resolved, Laurie, uh, HSBC, one of the world's biggest banks, is reducing its exposure in the UK. I mean, briefly, because we've got about 30 seconds. HSBC, Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corps, despite the name, has always been a stalwart of the UK banking system, but it is under so much pressure to focus on Asia or even spin off its Asian, Asian arms because that's the most profitable bit of the business. They are closing 25% of their branches in the UK. Yesterday, they announced the sale of their Canadian business, so it looks very much like HSBC is turning to face Asia a lot more completely. Laurie, thanks very much indeed. Laurie Laird, a Rise Business correspondent, talking to me there from London.